here near the Yukon and Jade City, we've got the world's richest deposits of Neperite Jade. And the Chinese won it. <laughs> this is gonna be the million dollar rock. Now, we just have to find it. I will dig till my hands bleed. Go! Jade makes people do crazy things. <laughs> See that water, Alan? The bottom part is better than I thought. See that nice green there? Yeah. One more like that. Yeah. <laughs> At the Jade Mine Wolverine, Alan and the crew have unearthed a giant boulder nicknamed the Monster. This is the biggest one so far we see. It's probably altogether about 20 tons boulder. It's going to be a good day. It's just a big, huge monster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on the quality, the monster could be worth millions. Now we just need to cross our fingers. See, no fracture inside. We'll know when we cut it. But there's a big problem. Yeah, we're pretty much out. The fuel supply at camp is dwindling. Josh was on his way to Wolverine with two tanks full of diesel. What the f When he blew a tire on the rock truck. So we got to dismount, take it to town, get a new tire put on the rim. Is there an extension here? No, nope, we don't have that. But he's missing a lug wrench extension to get it off the truck. That means we're not getting this tire off. And there's like two weeks left in the season, so it's like beyond crunch time. Everything's depending on this fuel. Until Josh arrives with the fuel, the camp is running on fumes. OK, just wait a minute now. You want to give her one more roll and then drag it back? I don't know. So instead of risking running out of gas trying to move the monster... Yeah, it's not going anywhere. Robin decides to set up the wire saw at the edge of camp. Let's put that other one right here and right in there. Perfect. Couldn't bring the rock up to the wire saw, so we're bringing a wire saw to the rock. This one on the other side? Yeah. OK. Put that frame on the ground, and then we'll cut it on this side, right? Absolutely. By that board. It's good. Now the water can run away that way, and we'll be good to go. With the wire saw in place, Claudia sends Guy to bring Josh and R2 the tool they need to fix the tire. Have a safe day. Take care of my boy. I go rescue, or try. It's going to be really difficult to fix that. It's in the middle of nowhere. I want to see that saw running when I get back. But we need fuel in camp desperately. That thing might be close to max. An hour down the road, Josh and R2 have the truck jacked up, but they can't get the tire off without the extension tool. Oh, thank God. Bam. Cool. We got it. What we're going to do is just take her off. There's no fix in this one. And then uh, we're going to have fun loading it in the Bedford. OK. Give her a wiggle. Fucking 800 pound tire. Because we got to pull this thing off as quick as possible, because we got to get this fuel. Yeah. Bring the bottom out. We got less than two weeks to wrap it up and get our jade out. So pressure's on big time. It's so close. I almost hit it if we angle her. Yeah, push it over the back up. OK, nice. Now they need to load the wheel onto the back of the Bedford. You want to try and lift it with a box very carefully? This tire weighs like 800 pounds at least. So between the three of us, there's no way we're getting it on by hand. So we're going to try and use this as a hoist. A lazy man forklift. That is sketchy. OK. OK. There we go. Oh, yeah. yeah. Keep coming. Hold on a second. Yeah. OK. Dig. Yep. OK. And let go. Well, now it's 1 PM, so let's get the out of here. 
the nearest repair shop is over 12 hours away. I gotta get this out as quick as I can so that we can get it back on this truck because everything's depending on this fuel. It is a race against time right now, so pressure's on to get it done quick. We'll be at the landing around 10 p.m., go to Jade City, spend the night, and then we'll go back, get the tire, and take it to town. I'm sure we'll be splitting up the drive home from the landing. So, we have no headlights, right? No. On top of the long trip, the Bedford doesn't have working headlights, so Josh and R2 are in a race with daylight. OK, guys, safe trip, man. Well, you see you soon. Thanks for the help. We left on a 10-hour journey in the Bedford at 2 p.m. with no headlights. It's dark at 9 p.m. At least three hours of pitch black driving in a vehicle with no headlights on the worst trail you've ever been on in your entire life. I need a tire with air in it. Back at Wolverine, Robin is trying to find a replacement tire for the rock truck. Because we're way out here in the bush. If you don't have it with you, you don't have it. OK, thank you. I will see you later. OK. He heads back to Jade City to track down a new tire. The rock truck tire can't be fixed immediately. We run out of fuel in the next two days. It's devastating. The crew starts cutting the monster, hoping the fuel won't run out. Cross your fingers. The fuel will probably take a day to, you know, cut it. But it's day. Even like a half of the border without fracture, they're still making big money. As night falls, Josh and R2 are still making their way along the trail towards Dee's Lake. We're 24 hours at that point. You know, you get the tire off, you load it up, and then you work for 12 hours after you've already been working for 12 hours. We drove with flashlights for two and a half hours in first gear, hovering over the steering wheel, sucking in the fumes from that diesel getting sick to our stomachs. By the time they reach the landing, it's almost midnight and pitch dark. Josh and R2 leave the Bedford with its broken headlights at the trailhead and jump into a company truck. We got to the highway, and I couldn't see my migraine was so bad. They need to drive another two hours in order to reach Jade City. I knew that we needed to shift. That was the point of having two drivers. So I had to try to alleviate some of the trip from Robin, and I was unable to alleviate any of it. I could not drive. I had to crawl into the back seat. While Josh sleeps in the back of the pickup, R2 continues driving. After almost 24 hours on the job, Josh and R2 are trying to reach Jade City when R2 falls asleep behind the wheel. Last night when R2 and Josh were coming back, it was late at night and things happened and they hit the ditch. So, you know, you know, it's our own fault. It shouldn't have happened because we shouldn't, we should have had it set up where you go to the motel instead of driving, especially after that long of a trip. Josh and R2 have managed to survive the accident unscathed. I was pushing my limits and I pushed too far. My migraine was so bad I had to crawl on the back and go to sleep. And then uh, I woke up rolling. I could be in the ICU right now. I could be dead. It's really scary. Nodded off, and next thing I know, we're in the ditch. Big wake-up call for all of us. It's going to take me a bit to, to get over it, what I could have done to myself and Josh. So I'm really, really sorry about what happened last night, Robin. Hey, just that's that's fine. It's, you know, you guys are okay, and that's the important part there. That everybody is okay. News of the 
the accident has not yet reached Wolverine, where the crew has just cracked open the biggest boulder of the season. It's nice. Look at that. The green's a little light, but it's good. Yay! But before they get a chance to look too closely, Alan gets a phone call from Jade City. Claudia! Claudia! What? It's worse because I'm out at Wolverine. Seriously? If I was home, I think it would have been better because I could have dealt with it immediately and I could have seen him and known he was OK and everything. So being away, it's worse. Thank God nobody got really badly hurt. Thank God. to go and see it in the daylight if there's anything there that we can pick up and then get a tow truck to come. See how that suspension is loose? That's what got the brunt of the impact. So yeah, the whole front end is destroyed. I obviously hit it at an angle with my tires. There's nothing left? Yeah, completely irreparable. We thought we had it in us and we were confident. And I put my head down for a few minutes to get some rest and uh, woke up airborne upside down. That was one major son of a bitch in impact. The tire caught this bank, dug right in. It just went along, and then it just finally fell over. I got to take a quick sweep in here. Holy <laughs> The seat that I had moved out of like half an hour earlier is right there, crushed. There's no reason why I'm not dead right now. There is absolutely no reason, there's no logic, there's no way of explaining it with luck or superstition or nothing. There's absolutely no explanation why I'm not dead right now. If he had been buckled in in the passenger seat, he would have uh, definitely got squished and had some head impact injuries, so. Working hard and going to your limit and doing the absolute maximum that you know you can is, uh, is a dangerous lifestyle. After learning about Josh and R2's accident, Claudia flies back to Jade City. Nothing is more important than my family or the safety of my friends and my employees. Nothing. Nothing. Thank God my son is alive. Seeing him and holding him and knowing that he's still breathing and that he didn't die, which he could have. This one turned out the way that it did. Well, I feel like I'm running out of luck, though. It's sketching me out. It's stupid. Um, you saw the truck? It's on its way here right now. Too many close calls in the last 12 months. Yep. I was pretty lucky I skated under the wire a lot of times, but the last couple seasons, skating under the wire doesn't get as easy. Which way did it flip? This way? Driver's side is the one that was down. It could have been a huge tragedy. Right now, it's only a broken truck. This is where things get really weird because, again, we found the best jade we've ever found, and Joshua and R2 have an accident. It just happens that every time there's a successful day in camp that we have a, an unsuccessful day somewhere else. Whenever something good happens, something bad happens. Last year, after finding some great jade cores... Claudia and I can't believe what we found. 
Kevin, one of the drillers, had a serious accident while driving back to Jade City. Then, two months ago, <laughs> as Claudia and her team found one of the best boulders so far, oh my God. the newest crew member, Jay, injured his back and had to be airlifted from the camp. This is the stone of heaven for the Chinese. If you want to get the stone of heaven, then there's a price for it. This year just has been a year of bad luck. If you don't believe that the Jade needs to spill blood after three strikes for us, I don't know. The next morning, R2 returns with Devon to the disabled rock truck, still loaded with fuel needed at camp. So here we are, made it with the tire. We're gonna go complete our job from yesterday, get the tire fixed up, and get that truck back out to camp. He joins them to help put on the new tire they brought from Jade City. Want me to lift her up? Yep. Hydraulic power is our technique. Grab that chain underneath her. This accident, it's really hit home to all of us what really is important out here. Okay. A poor judgment call. Had I seriously injured Josh, I'd have a really hard time uh, going on and accepting that. So I'm thankful to be here. I'm thankful to still be at work. I'm thankful that Josh is doing well. Just have to move on from here. Go this way and then in towards you. Jack it back up a bit. R2 was offered the chance to take the rest of the season off, but he refused. I don't want to go home right away. I want to see the job through. Thank you, guys. Take that stuff really seriously. OK, hold it right there. The rock truck's got to get out right away. We got to get that thing back out to camp. The tire looks good, and the load's ready to go. So yeah, time to hit the trail, get some fuel delivered to camp. Take care, Guy. Absolutely. Claudia and Robin are back at Wolverine. It's almost the end of our season, and thank God. After a hellish few days, Claudia is eager to deliver some good news and show Robin the boulder they cut just before the accident. This is the biggest, best boulder we've ever found. A 20-ton beautiful boulder at the very end of the season. It doesn't get better than that. Put it right here. Really nice. Yeah, they're never, you're never getting 100 a kilo for that. Not possible. What? You can't have any of this. Way too many fractures. We can't win. Nope. No good. At that point, you're ready to just send everybody home and call it a year. The wind's going out of our sails. You're never getting 100 a kilo for that. Not possible. The 20-ton boulder Claudia was hoping would turn around their fortunes may not be so great after all. That's going to be cut out. We can't have any of this. It's going to be just this stuff. All this has to be cut out. I'm really disappointed that Robin isn't as happy as uh, me and Alan are about this boulder. There's not enough green on it. Robin would like to try another cut to see if they can expose some higher quality jade. It's going to be just this stuff. But the first cut used up the last of their fuel. <laughs> Robin, Claudia! But luck may be finally swinging their way. Yay, there he is! Yay. <laughs> After an almost one week delay, made it. R2 arrives with the fuel. It's his first trip since the accident. Hey, how was the trip? Very good. Good. Yeah, it's good to be back. The tire held up really well, and we didn't have to drive at night, so it was great. We got all the diesel we need, so it's here at camp. And yeah, I look forward to a good sleep in my own bed tonight. With fuel finally at camp, the crew quickly tops up the wire saw to try another cut. 
fueled up? Yep. All righty. If the color is not there, then you have to keep cutting it to prove the rock is good. Right there. Our mining season has been really so tough and rough and so many ups and downs. Yeah, I'm almost ready for it to be over. OK, let's go. Let's crack it open. Let's do it. OK, it's open. OK. Nice. It's way better. Yeah. The color's better and the more clean. Looks gorgeous. It's the perfect shade of green. Yeah, this side is even better. There's not very many fractures. It's really clear. Not a lot of waste on this puppy. Right now, I think uh, about a million, maybe. Cha-ching. <laughs> Realistically, that's like winning a lottery ticket. A million dollars with a jade changes everything. It changes the attitude of everybody that's working. It's really what we all want. This is the jade that we're looking for. It's the nicest we've ever found. We couldn't ask for better at the end of the season, especially at the end of this season. Next time on Jade Fever. There's no snow on the ground yet, but it's going to be here soon. A thousand feet above where Devin's working, there's snow. We got to get out of here. As soon as this road sees snow, it's just like grease. It's a race against time. It is f***ing crazy slippery up here. Get on quads and get out of here, because no more tire machines are making it out this road. Start your engine. The last thing you want to do is ride quads in snow. What a crazy way to end the year.